We all live the lives that we then are meant to teach, right? And it's because your soul came in to embody something, to have some kind of life force experience. Like you would not believe the volumes of divorced women or getting divorced women who are coming to me because they have decided to divorce the narcissist. And so they don't know how to, the narcissist usually controlled all their money too. And so now they're learning how to build the muscles of controlling, you know, their own money. And now that they're leaving divorce. And so like, you don't even know, like how you're being prepped for what it is that you're meant to do. Hey everybody, welcome to another Awaken Your Relationships. I am Julie Murphy and today we're going to talk about how don't misunderstand how things when they come up, particularly physically, how you could misinterpret how they are, what's really going on. So Rita and I were talking about how um, when something's coming at you and you're physiologically shifting, it's not that something's wrong, it's just that something's clearing. And so before we dive deep, let's get into the hitting that subscribe, like, and notification bell, um, not only on my channel, but Rita's channel, because we are going to help you get the life that you absolutely love. <laughs> Voila! Voila, Shazam! I like to use Shazam a lot. Because <laughs> you're like a magician fun. then. <laughs> well, exactly. You know, and that's what, that's what everybody is. You know, one of the things... I love about my field of work is that there's been so much understanding of the body mind that's really been scientifically proven mm -hmm. now over yeah. the last 15, 20 years. And it's taken this vague, you know, well, become a Buddhist or, you know, move to a beach, this vague self-healing process that, you know, was hit or miss. And made right. it very strategic because mm -hmm. when we understand the roadmap of how our body holds on to stress and we understand how it lets go of stress, then now you can target yourself in a very short period of time of self-care where you can reverse the effects of um, stress and narcissism and abuse, you know, that we thought we're just a part of our character or our psyche, but with concentrated focus on working on your, your thought process and breaking those neural connections, your chemical process, breaking that addiction to the emotions and putting in a different structure to kind of hang from, um, to, to put your life around you can change your life very quickly, but you have to put everybody aside. You have to put up, you have to lock whatever door you have to lock. You have to turn off whatever phone you have to turn off. And you have to concentrate on this like a, a sabbatical for yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you will be able to make headway. But the tricky thing for most women is that they don't know how to get the space so that they can heal themselves but now we know how to do it even while you're juggling the rest of your life. Now we know how to make it while you're driving down the street or while you're taking a shower instead of just when you're on vacation in Hawaii. And so it's really wonderful when you combine the physical piece, which has been so murky and vague for so many people for a long time, and integrate it with the mental and the neural connection piece and the nervous system and they're working together. It's just like when you make a good soup, you know, now you're putting in all of these ingredients. All blended together. All blended together and they work together and they synergize. And, and what happens is it's just like you put miracle Grow on your tiny little seed. Mm. It suddenly is able to burst out and birth and become what it needs to become. But until you have enough energy, enough life force coming into you, enough space to breathe. You cannot get enough momentum to get through that heavy time like a rocket ship leaving orbit. 
you know, we have to drop things as we're going along. But if we don't physically drop them and mentally and in our relationships, we're not going to make it to the next stage of life. And they're going to be 80 years old in the same codependent relationships mm -hmm. that are making them sick, having three bouts of cancer, being the main caretaker for God knows how many people and and wondering why their life didn't turn out quite that good and their kids hate them. That was a mouthful <laughs> because I'm sitting here going, I, I can identify with everything that you've just said. I can identify with it because obviously with um, my past, which is what led me, you know, we all live the lives that we then are meant to teach, right? And it's because your soul came in to embody something, to have some kind of life force experience. Like you would not believe the volumes of divorced women or getting divorced women who are coming to me because they have decided to divorce the narcissist. And so they don't know how to, the narcissist usually controlled all their money too. And so now they're learning how to build the muscles of controlling, you know, their own money. And now that they're leaving divorce. And so like, you don't even know, like, how you're being prepped for what it is that you're meant to do. And um, it's fascinating to me when you talk about um, that these patterns keep repeating all because you have to understand that it's layers to the stress. It's layers to how it physiologically works in your body. Um, and so I'm at another, it's interesting that you're saying all this because I'm at another layer of this and and you know i have intentionally you know put out there that i'm not doing that literally the words out of my mouth this past week is i'm not doing this anymore i'm not doing this anymore i'm not doing this anymore <laughs> i literally and it and remember it doesn't have to necessarily do with your romantic relationships because that weaving of how you operate in the world weaves into all areas, whether it's your employer relationships, in your family relationships, in your romantic relationships. It's, 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 just, it's everywhere. Every so time I hear a woman tells me, and I hear it all the time, it's why this is one of the best jobs in the entire universe. Women tell me all, when they say to me, I'm not doing this anymore. I want to throw a party. I, <laughs> I want to, I, I want to them to explore that they can have 400 orgasms and enjoy themselves <laughs> and that they can eat the good chocolate and that they can go to the beach and turn off their phone. Mm -hmm. They have permission to do that. And in fact, when they do do that, because oh. they're not going to do it anymore, watch the F out. It's a profound, profound sense of freedom. Like you have no idea how the little girl in you just wakes up and then giggles. It's like, <laughs> like, I actually just, because I, See, I don't giggle like that <laughs> well I I literally left my cell phone on my kitchen counter the other day and I went out to the beach for two and a half hours because I live on the beach and I literally was just like and I've done this plenty I've held you know I've held plenty of boundaries and I've held you know done it but there is this profound sense of freedom because it's like ooh, you want this to be your your time, your honoring, no matter what you're showing up and just saying, you know what? I'm no, I literally like I've shared with people this, impl this week has been particularly, um, of me saying, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. And this straw is about to break and this is what you have to do or I'm out. So I give the other person the opportunity. I literally told someone this week, I am not suffering with you anymore. Yes. <laughs> and I just said, so if this can't change, you're at a turning point. You can either choose to heal because 
what it is is once you realize that you're plugging into the world a certain way and you keep embodying your soul all along the way as you're healing, you have a lack of patience or tolerance for anything that's not aligned with what your soul wants and not all this codependence and narcissism and everything else. You know, so I, uh, I had a, a spiritual mentor and many people judged him. He was a Native American Ojibwe who lived in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Uh, and he was 350 pounds and he was always talking about sex. And um, he would yell at his dog and he would call his, grand, his grandson's, you know, little gay children. And um, he, he was a hoarder and uh, he didn't move. He just sat at, at the head of this table, this long table at this motel him and his wife owned and, and, and just, and, and was there and would talk all sorts of fascinating things, uh, you know, about what sexual terms actually means. And I mean, and I would sit there weekend after weekend and, w and watch this, but no, it, you know, and part of my head was going, but why, you know, if he's supposed to be so Zen and he's, he's supposed to be so enlightened, people travel from all over the world, wealthy people, innovative people, famous people. He's invited all over the world to do everything, <laughs> you know, and he's a pig. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. And but people almost don't, it's, it's funny how when they're that way in the world, all they're doing is creating what they desire in the world. And we get to choose whether or not we participate in it or not. Well, and here's the, but here's the powerful thing. I always sat there and wondered why he had such power. Mm. And it's because he was comfortable being who he was, knowing who he really was and letting go of things being in the moment. He didn't care if he looked stupid. He didn't care if he was a hypocrite. He just did he it. Didn't, he just did it because that's what all of us are doing. Mother Teresa was not perfect. Gandhi was not perfect. M Martin Luther King was not perfect. And we have to stop holding ourselves to this level of perfection, which no one ever filled, ever. Ever, 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 ever. Ever. It's all, it's all a lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so fascinating on so many levels. I um, I sat here and I, I sit there. When you realize that you are the creator of your life, and then you realize how you've negotiated yourself away in that creation, it has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with your thoughts, your feelings, your actions totally right and when you can take ownership of that and then when you start to do something about it then you do have to realize because what started us down this path today talking about this was the fact that we were um talking about how you had said to me julie with the acupuncture work you're doing lately because it's about getting it out of my physical body because i'm really I am, I feel I'm at a place where my soul is fully anchored in energetically and now physiologically my body is ripple affecting from it. So this is where I want people to really hear that as you're making these changes, you're not necessarily getting sick. You're not necessarily, all you're doing is being shown in your physical body where the old vibration is and then support it to move out of your physical body as opposed to going down the path going, I'm sick, I'm developing this, I'm because that will, you have a fork in the road and you can either choose going, oh, this is just the old vibration moving out of my physical body or you can go down the, oh, I'm sick path. And then what you do, because you think that and you feel that, then you create the sick. You don't right. have to create the sick. 
And it's not just sick physically in her body with the sore hips and the TMJ and the migraine headaches and the inflammation. It's also in our mental health when we're depressed and we're angry and we're irritated and our digestive system and our relationships and our money. And, you know, it's the sickness that's inside of you that you've been ignoring is radiating out into your world telling you that you need to fix this but so many women don't have a road map they don't see how they can get out of the bad situation that they're in because it's a monumental effort to do this right. work you have to choose yourself not just once you have to choose yourself almost every day for the rest of your life even if other people don't like it and even if there's a part of you that doesn't like yourself because authenticity means no longer complying, no longer being out of alignment. And it means that some things will blow up. So you do have to be ready. Right. Right. So true. It's so, so true. And you know what? Um, I think that if you can start to see, I'm going to give an example. So for the last like month, I'm getting all this numbness in my fingers right? And yeah. I learned from my acupuncturist that the middle finger is actually that meridian line is your heart protector line. So I know what's happening right now is all my systems are resetting because I spent two days ago where um, she had stuck. There's points in your ear that you can put needles and I actually still have some of the small ones in there because she left them in there to keep those meridians activated. And, um, because it leads it's my heart so the heart is opening to more vulnerability right so how to be in the world not in my conditioning and in my limiting belief system from my childhood right we all have that subconscious mind thing that goes on then it's going through to my lungs so the next thing that came up so she followed the whole meridian line in my ear and i had all these needles sticking out of my ear it was the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life and so then she poked, she put ones um, on my sides of my chest. She's like, let me find the sorest part to see, to open up your heart. Because a month ago, she was putting all the needles here by my actual heart. And then, so every week that's gone by, she's opened up the energy around my energetic heart walls that I had created for protection around my heart. So we're opening it up. And then she said, oh, and now it affects the lungs. And the lungs is about being able to take in life because there's a big part about surrendering into what you've created in life thus far and being able to digest. And then I looked in Louise Hay's book, you know, I love this one, Heal Your Body. You know, she talks about, I looked up the fingers and it was so funny. It's about digesting, being at peace with the details of your life. And it's like, oh, so as I say that new mantra, I'm at peace with the details of my life. I'm at peace with the details of my life. The numbness in my finger starts going away. It's the craziest thing because our emotions and what we feel and what we think send messages through our limbic system. And through that, it creates our physical reality. So if I know I am now just doing my ensoulment, my bodies and completely embodying my soul at this point, what it does is it pushes out all the stuff that is no longer of that vibration. And so we have to realize that it's not necessarily sickness. So she's then, she put the, the needles in the most tender parts of my sides and it was like, Wah! like I thought I was going to hit the roof. And then she put them at the base of my lungs and it was like, ah, and then she's like, okay, let's go after the small intestine. And that too was like, oh my God. And so, cause it's all about letting go, surrender. It's, like, it's about opening up and letting go and surrendering at the same time so that you then, that's when they talk about you're in the flow of life. And it's like, you can only flow when you energetically get the blocks out of the way. And we don't realize where those blocks are. And what's been fascinating to me about this process is that then the inflammation has Go. Now, I've done this dance. It has not happened overnight. It's like I've had phases where it's like, I'm not creating this anymore. I'm not doing this. Then it goes back the other way, and it's like, okay, I'm not doing this. Okay, I'm going over here. Oh, 
you know, and it's like one thing after the other. And it's fascinating to me how when you can start to realize that it's just the old vibration moving out physiologically and it's not a sickness, the energy moves super fast because I go into acupuncture, she puts all these needles in my ear and all of a sudden nothing that hurt me before hurts me. It's fascinating. That's where we have to understand it's energy first, then it's a physical problem. So if you direct the energy or you get somebody that knows how to direct the energy, then it goes away. So there's, there's a bridge actually. Um, Asian medicine is mainly focused on how uh, energy shows up in the world in different ways. And in your body, it tends to show up in your electrical system. Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is when you have a memory or when you have an experience and you suppress the emotion and you don't find a way to process through it or understand it, like if you were an infant or even in the womb or two or three or eight or whatever, um, your body takes that contraction, takes the chemicals of the emotion, the adrenaline and the cortisol, it takes the... Um, the potential energy, you mm -hmm. know, the, the holding on to the contraction part of it, and it will put it someplace in your body. Right. And typically it's the place that's the most vulnerable, almost like black holes suck things exactly. in. Exactly. Old injuries suck things in. And so all the toxins and all the emotion chemicals and all of it. And so the, the bad spot will continue to get worse physically because it's now storing more and more toxic waste yeah. That's and the when there's a contraction right? yep and when there's a contraction then um the waste the cellular waste around that area can't clear because there's no circulation through it right. because it's in a in a locked up contracted place like in your butt or your shoulder or your jaw or whatever and so um it doesn't get any new life flowing through it. It doesn't it gets very little nutrition, very little blood flow. Um, and it gets worse over time because it's, it's just a, a, a pond that's slowly killing itself. Right. And so the physical piece of your emotions is where the, where the kinetic energy, where the um, chemicals and, and where the neural connection tells it where it's stored. Oh, it's stored in your lower back. Oh, that's stored in your knee from that old injury when you twisted your leg when you were three, you know, and it's stored there. And when you start to do your emotional work, your body's now letting go of everything that's stored there. And it comes out in shaking. It comes out in crying. It comes out in sweating, comes out with your digestion changing. It comes out with your uh, a potentially an, an increase and then a decrease of the symptoms that you have. Um, it's a very, it's a very physically demanding process to release right. trauma that's been held in your nervous system that you find by by having the thought or the trigger. Right. You find it. That's why every time you do the thing, your back hurts. Every time you hear the thing, your jaw locks up. So can and we so, talk? Can we can yeah. talk deeper about that for a second? Because yeah. this is absolutely something that happens to me. So this is um, the minute I start thinking <clears throat> about the most recent gaslighting or narcissistic event or watching watching the pattern. So like now, and I'm at a place where I don't react to it, but I can see it. And I see it and I go, Phew. yep. So I, I learned from Ross Rosenberg. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, he is an actual psychologist that um, d is an expert in narcissism. And he, he calls it that you have, um, if you're dealing with a narcissist, that you have self-love deficit disorder. And totally agree. We talk about that all the time on here that you know, the solution is to love yourself and what's the most loving thing for yourself. Set and boundaries. That's correct. the most loving thing for yourself, which is to set boundaries fiercely and hold them. Right. So 
when you hold the boundaries and you see the patterns, you stop reacting to the patterns. Now you have to stop because this is the this is the step that I'm in is I have to stop having those thoughts even go through my head. Like, because I have noticed, I'm like, when is it that my leg starts lighting up and my back, lower back starts lighting up? Well, it starts lighting up and cramping up when I have the thought that goes through my head because I'm frustrated that this pattern's even still in my life. And the challenge is, is because I have four children and I have a lifelong connection. And it's when I see some of those things show up within my children or they, it's like, it's like I get so frustrated that it's even remotely coming back into my house or that I have to hold another boundary or I have to like help us there because even post all the stuff that you're talking about, Rita, holding the boundaries, letting it go, being able to observe, and then life gives you another example of it this is where it's let's call it uh i guess what i'm working on is a deeper level of observance and hold the boundary without the attachment of an emotion with it so this is this is how you can get your head there so the best teachers in life are like my mentor friend the 350 pound ojibwe someone who walks into your life and they push every single button, every single sexism, racism, memory, lineage thing that's going on in your body. And you are now able to identify that it's a problem and take care of it. Right. So, so our relationships, they're on their own timeline. Some will grow slowly, some will grow quickly. You know, it, it, it's not up to us. So they're going to, if they're jerks, they're going to keep being jerks. That's not going to change anytime soon. Oh yeah. You, you absolutely. So that is the, so that has been a pattern of mine is that I, if I can see the potential in somebody, I hold the space for their potential and it literally kills my physical body. Cause you're not staying present with the reality. You have to be able to say, I see that you're a hyena, but I also know you can, you know, be a, a leader. So I'm going to see you for who you are, but help give you the support you need to become the best version of yourself that I know you can be. But it's a crapshoot, which is why you don't do anything you resent. If you're going to resent it or push too hard or do too much, don't do it. Only if you're feeling magnanimous and in a good mood, do you support the people who well, should be it's supporting about, themselves. Right. So, so it's about you don't want to you don't want to respond to push energy with push energy. It's like, right. you, you, want, want, to you want to respond with loving yourself. And that correct. Okay. So I would say that I'm pretty good at that these days is responding to what's good for me because I've gotten to a point where I take a step back and then I go, yeah, I'm just going to exit this and then I'll figure out the next step. Right. So I, I'm pretty good at that. So, but it's the thoughts that go through my head. You need a replacement mantra. You need something that, um, you know, Joe Polish is a, is a very successful marketer. So in my little entrepreneurial world and um, what he swears got him there are the mantras he created and he created them very specifically. And Greg Braden talks about it too. He talks about it in the wisdom codes. Mm -hmm. You know, the basic structure is uh, something that gets past your uh, bullshit meter, you know, so it has to be like, I really love the thought or what a wonderful idea, because we can all get behind an idea. We can all get behind a thought. You know, many times people say, I'm a wonderful person. And the other part of them says, no, you're not. You're really kind of screwed up. And so the mantra never works. But if you have a mantra where you can buy into it. Like, I really love the thought that I'm a generous, open-hearted woman surrounded by generous, open-hearted people, blah, blah, blah. But it has to be true for you. And it has to be pulling you forward in, into your, your potential. You have to stop worrying about everybody else's potential so much and focus on your own potential. 
Mm. and move in that direction. And that's the mantra you say. The mantra you say is the one that moves you into your highest version of you. And when you're frustrated, you're breaking the, um, the addiction to the thought you're switching over the circuit breaker, you are um, unplugging from the neural connection by saying this mantra as obsessively as you might think about how you're frustrated. Got Did it. that make sense? Yeah. I started with, I really love that thought and then whatever it is, something that I really, really want. And then I end with, wow, I really, I really love that thought. And I'm so grateful for that thought. Because gratitude is the highest, is the highest form of receivership, the highest form of uh, manifestation. So if you end with it's sincere gratitude, so I always use a mantra that I know will use trigger words that will make me happy, like money. Money, I'm a Taurus. Money makes me happy. Chocolate makes me happy. You know, soft beds make me happy. And so if that's part of my, that's part of my mantra, and it automatically kicks my beta endorphins in and helps lift me out of my poor me, which just right. keeps you, you know, the suffering cycle just keeps you stuck. So you have to create a mantra that you can buy into that positively triggers you so that you can feel grateful. And that is what's strong enough to break the addiction to the old version of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's the next layer for sure. And, and oh, you know, yeah. it's interesting that you say that like a mantra, because what I had decided, I was like, well, that's what Louise Hayes book is all about is new reframing of the thoughts and the feelings that you have. And so literally in this last week, every time it comes in my head, I'm like, I am at peace with the details of my life. I am at peace. Like that's what I flipped it with when it started to trigger in my thoughts. I'm like, I am at peace with the details of my life. And uh, so it's good to hear that I actually did that before this conversation. <laughs> and I would say something like, I'm at peace with the details of my life. And the inner part of me that's mad and still a child would be like, no, you're not. You're still angry about this. Be angry about this. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like, I am really, I am really like not in that angry or frustrated place anymore. Isn't it's more wonderful? about the addiction yeah, of the feeling. thoughts. It's the addiction of the thoughts going through my head. And you said that it's like, it's, it literally is where those neurons are plugged into my head going, oh, this is happening. Let me think like this. And, and I want to tell, I want to tell you something. You, you're recognizing that it's your, you, you see that it's your thoughts, but when you break the addiction to your thoughts, you will realize you've been experiencing every single thought in your body. And it probably came from your body first and you created the thought to explain why you feel. I don't disagree with that because it was the first thing, it's like a, almost like a punch in the gut. It's like, why in yep. the hell is this still here? All the work I've done, all the stuff I've gone through in six years. And it's like, okay, I'm really done with this. Like, no, but that's where I was even like, man, I, one of my employees yesterday, like, I just was like, I can't suffer with you anymore. Like. You are not stepping into all your greatness. And because and I know for a fact that if you continue to plug in with somebody that's one of your old suffering patterns as well, like people come in your life for a reason, right? They come into your life for a reason and you're interfacing. Let's just say at the time they come in your life, you're still operating as a codependent. So if you're still operating as a codependent and they're, operating as a codependent to people in their life too. Well, when you break that codependence, well, that person may or may not be on your timeline to break their codependence pattern. And you have to be willing to let that person go to walk out of their life, or you got codependence still going on in your world. When everybody's worried that, you know, you're going to hurt somebody that'll hurt their feelings, they won't like you. And so we don't, we yeah. don't let people go. So I want to take this to a deeper level which is I've done, I've, I've worked with women through end of life, through end of life of the people they love, through se severe suffering, through massive uh, surgeries, through things that they never recovered from. Mm. And the thing I learned 
is that this stuff is really hard mm -hmm. and everyone is on their own timeline. Right. And I can't determine what timeline they're on. And so my job is to have a higher vision and see what's best that the higher order thought, the higher order solution. And I'm doing it for the good of all of us. And so when I come up above and say, what's the best thing? And maybe the best thing is to encourage her to find some place where she's a better fit. Maybe the right thing is encouraging them to, and I'm not saying this about her, I'm thinking about other people in my life, but encouraging them to go to addictions support, you know, or, or codependent. Yeah, so that was actually the conversation was, hey, I've pointed you in the right direction of the things that can help you get through this and you are still choosing to not step into it regularly and consistently and I can't help you with that anymore. You have to step into it or I'm, I can't do this game with you anymore. Right, and you're not, you're not going to because it's not in anyone's highest good. You right. know, when you continue to, to um, not be true to what's right for you, it, so my friend again, who I dearly loved and admired, you know, I was just fascinated how he could get away with all of this crap. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just amazed. And it's, it's your authenticity, even if other people don't like it, that pulls them and gives them permission to step into their authenticity. Right. We don't hold a line that's higher than the one we've been holding for our world and our society, then we're going to stay in the muck as yeah. the world we've always been in. Right. But if we can see, you know, that that people are on their path and see our job to help give them just a little bit of a helping hand up when we've got some extra, extra time, extra focus, extra support, and we give it to them that we're moving the world in a good place. Right. So triggering or being a jerk or hurting somebody's feelings or, or you know, someone not liking you, it many times is the best thing for them totally. because it motivates them to be a higher version. Of, they have the calling, now they have the opportunity. They can step into a higher version of them or they can stay where they are, right. but they have the sovereignty to make their own choice for their life based on reality not based yep. on some fantasy world you've created for them because you're a nice boss. Totally. Totally get it. Well, Rita, thanks for all of your knowledge today. You are amazing. And um, don't forget everybody to hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell on both of our channels. And you can go to RitaHickmanCoaching.com to get a hold of Rita, JulieMurphy.com for me. We have lots of programs, lots of stuff that you guys can plug into and we can get you to the next place that you absolutely love. Thanks, and I'm everybody. going to be joining you soon on your group coaching program. Thanks for yes. letting me be part of absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, the group coaching has been so, so much fun because it allows people at different price points to be able to get access and really make real change in their lives, which has been so oh, yeah. fun. People, I invest in people um, all the time because I know that where they're at, when they can get through that, they're, they're going to recognize the value. They're going to start to want more for themselves, start to want to be more generous to other people. So it's, it's as if I'm looking at someone and say, well, this is a gamble, I'm gonna invest in you and we're gonna see which direction you go. Right. You know, but I'm betting on you, I think you can do it. So Beautiful. that's why I do a variety of price points because it's like, okay, well, where are you at? And then kind of the higher range people help subsidize and cover, you know, the, the people who need more support or need more scholarship or, or need more of a, a break, you know, right. so that the least of us doesn't suffer. Totally. Well, we're all connected. That's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.